This is a video presentation of an arthroscopic neurolysis of the axillary nerve for axillary neuropathy and quadrilateral space syndrome. The patient is a 48-year-old male who underwent an anterior bank cart and subscapularis repair seven years ago. For the last five years, however, he has complained of posterior shoulder pain and weakness. He had tenderness to palpation in the quadrilateral space. He had no obvious deltoid atrophy or decreased sensation. He demonstrated limited range of motion and external rotation and had mild weakness with the arm abducted. A complete series of shoulder x-rays was unremarkable. An MRI demonstrated his previous repairs, but there were no obvious compressive lesions or masses around the axillary nerve throughout its course. He also underwent a diagnostic injection at the quadrilateral space that alleviated his symptoms temporarily. He was diagnosed with axillary neuropathy and quadrilateral space syndrome. Having failed extensive non-operative treatment, he elected to proceed with surgery. The patient is positioned in the beach chair position with general and regional anesthesia. The 30-degree arthroscope is placed in the axillary pouch and a posterior inferior portal is established. To avoid any damage to the axillary nerve, only the skin is incised. Debridement is then performed with an arthroscopic shaver. The axillary pouch is carefully examined. A hooked tip monopolar device, handheld basket punches, and blunt probes are then used to carefully release the inferior capsule and free up the nerve. The axillary nerve typically courses obliquely just beneath the inferior glenohumeral capsule from anterior medial to posterior lateral and has multiple branches that must be protected along its course. Just beneath this capsule, the axillary nerve is visualized crossing inferior at the 530 position and running obliquely to posterior lateral. The axillary nerve is then carefully dissected. It is best to work from anterior to posterior with the hook probe, switching stick, and basket punches so as to not disrupt any branches. Care is taken to completely visualize the nerve and ensure all potential tethers are released. Multiple arborizations of the nerve are common at this level. The inferior capsule and adhesions are carefully released with a hooked tip monopolar device that creates less energy around the nerve. The neurolysis of the axillary nerve continues as the nerve courses posteriorly through the quadrilateral space and then anteriorly into the subdeltoid plane. In order to accomplish this, the camera is inserted into the subacromial space and a complete subacromial and subdeltoid bursectomy is performed to allow for visualization. Particularly, the posterior subdeltoid region needs to be completely freed up. The camera is inserted into a lateral portal and the shaver in the posterior portal, which is then used to complete the posterior bursectomy in the subdeltoid region. A meniscus basket is then inserted, and dissection is performed at the quadrilateral space in the lateral recess to safely visualize the axillary nerve. Again, working from proximal to distal and under direct arthroscopic visualization, a switching stick can then be used to further dissect out the nerve. The nerve is liberated anteriorly and posteriorly around the humerus with the combination of the hook probe, arthroscopic biter, and switching stick. Final visualization from the anterior lateral portal into the subdeltoid space is conducted, showing the released axillary nerve with its arborization into the deltoid. Postoperative rehab was started immediately with full passive and active range of motion. A sling was used for comfort only. Strengthening was started at four weeks. In summary, common compressive etiologies to consider in patient evaluation are fibrous bands in the quadrilateral space, humeral osteophytes, malignancies, hypertrophied musculature, and scapular malunions. Advantages of this procedure include improved visualization with arthroscopy, patients have a potential to accelerate rehabilitation, and there is decreased surgical morbidity. Disadvantages of this technique are that it is technically challenging. Thank you for watching this video presentation.